For years, Asus have arguably been the kings of a very specific niche in the smartphone industry, dedicated gaming phones. And this is their latest creation, the ROG Phone 6 Pro. So if these phones are supposedly the best around for mobile gaming, what has improved since last year? I'm Will for GSM Marina, and let's find out in our ROG Phone 6 Pro review. At this point, ASUS and ROG have their gaming phone formula locked down. And like the previous couple of generations, the new one brings mostly incremental changes. Aesthetically, the ROG 6 Pro is slightly toned down compared to the past. You still get bold lines and geometric accents, but it's not so much in your face. The back is made of Gorilla Glass 3, which curves into the metal frame. And while the phone is on the heavy side, it's balanced and comfy in hand. The ROG Phone 6 Pro really stands out from the crowd thanks to a couple of neat features on the backside. First is the full-color ROG Vision Display, which is programmable and can be set to light up depending on what is happening on the phone. There's also an RGB Dare to Play logo, which can also be set to light up based on certain conditions and supports a number of effects. The ROG phones are well known for their multiple ports for connectivity. Here, you still get a traditional 3.5mm jack for headphones, and a new revamped side port as well, which is USB-C this time around. No fragile pogo pins like before. The side port can be used for charging the phone while gaming, data transfer, video out, or connectivity through a USB-C hub. Even with these ports, the 6 Pro is the first ROG phone to offer IP-rated water protection. It's just IPX4, so it would only stand up against light splashes, but it's still nice to have. The ROG 6 Pro brings back the ultrasonic triggers on the upper corners of the frame, which can be used as additional controls for your games. They're quite useful and versatile too, recognizing long presses, swipes, and slides. They're also really easy to map to on-screen controls through the overlay menu. And there are motion and gyroscope controls as well, which are an interesting alternative, and can potentially make for a more immersive experience. While we're talking about gaming controls, the ROG Phone 6 Pro is compatible with last year's Kunai Gamepad 3 as well. It's again quite simple to map on-screen controls to the joysticks and buttons. And then you have something that approaches a console experience. It could even give you an unfair advantage over other players. The controller is sold separately though. Unfortunately, Asus' tradition of releasing a wide variety of accessories for their new ROG phones has fallen by the wayside, and many of the older ones aren't compatible with the new phone. But you still get support for a few of them, including the controller, the ASUS Professional Dock, the ROG Clip, which comes with the phone and allows you to connect to a console gaming controller, an Aero Case, which also comes bundled, and a new Aeroactive Cooling Fan. We'll focus on the fan for now, it's the best one from ASUS so far. It brings four omnidirectional trigger keys on the back for extra input, and it's much easier to install than last year's model. There's even a kickstand on it, so you can use it to prop the phone up. And it has RGB lighting too, of course, to look all the more impressive. The point of the fan is not just to keep your hands cool, though it does that as well. It chills down the phone's internals to improve performance and prevent overheating. It does this even better than the previous model because it has an additional thermoelectric cooling element inside. Overall, when it comes to these sort of peripherals for a smartphone, the new Aeroactive Cooler is unmatched. It can operate in four different modes. Sure, the fan is loud, but it effectively unlocks the ROG 6 Pro's full performance potential. I'll take this opportunity to get into the performance overall. The ROG Phone 6 Pro packs the latest and greatest Android chipset, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. According to ASUS numbers, this should result in about 10% better performance overall from the regular 8 Gen 1 you'd find in many of today's flagships. This is some of the best you can get on any phone right now. The ROG 6 Pro also brings a revamped internal architecture for improved cooling. In the default performance setting, even without the fan, the sustained performance is quite stable. It is at a level much lower than maximum though, to prioritize battery life. On top of that, this phone brings plenty of optimizations and ways to unlock even better performance. The simplest way is to turn on the High Performance X mode, which transforms the interface into what looks like a glowing, overdriven machine. There are many other performance profiles to choose from, but the X mode is the most powerful you can achieve without the cooling fan attached. And when it comes to benchmark scores, it's a marked improvement over the default mode. 
The phone maintains a higher performance level over time too, and it still avoids throttling. But still, the extra heat has to go somewhere, and the phone's metal frame heats up quite a bit when gaming with X mode on. Things get better when you attach the fan. For one thing, it keeps your hands a lot cooler. And with the fan attached, you can enable the highest tier performance profile, X mode plus. Depending on the test, you can get much better results than the regular X mode when it comes to peak performance. And of course, sustained performance is much improved. In our tests with X mode plus enabled and the active cooling fan turned on to its coldest frozen mode, we saw impressively little performance loss even after an hour of heavy testing. There is a problem I've been building up to though. The fan, which makes gaming way more comfortable for your hands and unlocks the full performance level of the phone, doesn't come in the standard retail box. You need to get it separately. Let's move on to the ROG 6 Pro's display. It's a 6.78 inch AMOLED with a 1080p resolution, Gorilla Glass Victus protection, and a whopping 165 hertz refresh rate. This is an upgrade from last year's 144 hertz, and it makes movement on screen even smoother. You can choose from a variety of locked refresh rate options, the lowest being 60Hz, and with the auto mode, it will dial down to 60 when idling to save energy. There's full support for high frame rate gaming here, as you'd expect, and on top of that, you also get an extremely fast 720Hz touch sampling rate for unparalleled responsiveness. Asus claims a total end-to-end -end input latency of just 23 milliseconds. This AMOLED display is excellent. It's sharp and contrasty, and you get 10-bit color and HDR10 Plus support, as well as a Widevine L1 certification for full HD streaming. Colors can be quite accurate, and the max brightness is respectable. We measured up to 500 nits when using the manual brightness slider, and this can boost to 830 nits in auto mode when you need it outdoors. Like last year, there's an under-display optical fingerprint reader, and it's quite responsive. The ROG Phone 6 Pro brings something called Virtuo Audio, made in partnership with Dirac. There are a bunch of enhancements going on behind the scenes, like spatial separation, crosstalk cancellation, and bass boost. And on top of that, through the audio wizard there are a bunch of customization options for you to tweak things with. You get two dedicated, identical front-facing speakers, each with its own amplifier. They're loud, scoring very good on our charts, and the sound quality is some of the best around. You can opt for up to 512 gigs of storage on the ROG Phone 6 Pro, and while you can't expand that through microSD, you can connect to an external hard drive. Now let's touch upon the interface, which is Android 12 with ASUS's custom ROG UI on top. It brings a gamer aesthetic by default, but you can switch to a normal looking home screen if you want. It's pretty well supported too. ASUS promises two major OS updates and at least two years of security patches. You can find many of the game-related features on the fly through the Game Genie overlay, which you can access through a swipe from the corner. It's been redesigned since last year, but still offers a truckload of features, including Do Not Disturb, Brightness and Refresh Rate, a real-time performance overlay, a background cleaner, screen recording, and key mapping. And then you get to the Armory Crate, which is an ROG staple. It's more like the dedicated gaming interface. First and foremost is the Game Launcher. Each title gets its own crate and separate game profile. You can customize the looks of the crates if you want. Within each profile, you get a plethora of options, starting with performance. You'll find a number of modes here, and then if you enter advanced, you get other categories to tweak. For example, the touch menu gives you control over sensitivity and precision of your inputs. Within display, you get refresh rate and graphic settings. You can even go beyond the presets and get into some more advanced sliders here if you want. The performance tab gives you three levels of tuning, which are different from the performance modes we saw earlier. Yeah, it's complicated. But if you want to go even further, you can enter the advanced gaming tuning, which gives you granular control over various aspects of the performance and the phone's internals. You probably shouldn't mess with these unless you know what you're doing. The network tab gives you control over your connectivity. And then you can find your mapping for the air triggers, controller, and macros back on the front of the profile page. You can save the profile you made for your game and share it online, and download those that other people have made too. There are a bunch of system-wide settings as well. There are general performance modes, some of which require the cooling fan to operate, 
and also other options like the system lighting and management of the rear display, more controls, and a connect tab to reach ROG forums. Finally, ASUS has a solid set of battery care features which act together to optimize your charging in order to help the battery last longer. Like last year, the battery has a 6,000 mAh capacity split into two cells with MMT Tech for faster charging. The ROG Phone 6 Pro was able to score a great 119 hour endurance rating in our proprietary tests, better than the previous model and many rivals. For charging, the phone comes bundled with a 65 watt adapter, again just like last year. The charging speed is impressive for the size of the battery. We were able to go from 0 to 75% in half an hour. Last but not least, we've made it to the cameras. The ROG Phone 6 Pro has a 50 megapixel main cam, a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 5 megapixel macro cam. Photos from the main cam come out in 12.5 megapixels, and in daylight they look great overall. They are bright and clean, with plenty of detail and nice colors. Our only real complaint is some sharpening artifacts from time to time. Portraits have excellent subject separation and a convincing looking bokeh in the background. 13 megapixel photos from the ultra wide cam are decent, with a good level of detail, colors which line up with the main cameras, and low noise. They are a bit soft though, especially near the edges of the frame. 5 megapixel close ups taken with the macro cam are surprisingly clean and usable. There's plenty of detail, and the colors look good. In low light, the main cam shoots decent but unremarkable photos. There's enough detail and low noise. The night mode will sometimes trigger automatically, or you can toggle it on. The exposure is brighter, and both the dark areas and light sources get a major boost to detail and overall appearance. With the ultra wide, the auto night mode pretty much always triggers, and the results are okay. You get a bright enough exposure, boosted shadows, and contained highlights. Selfies come out at 12 megapixels, and they are pleasant looking, with plenty of detail and nice looking colors. The main cam can record video in up to 8K resolution at 24 FPS. This footage looks good, with a lot of detail and nice colors. 4K video from the main cam is great looking, with still plenty of detail and wide dynamic range. Colors look vibrant, but they don't go overboard. The ultra wide cam can shoot in 4K as well, and the quality is decent, with plenty of detail for this sort of cam. There's low noise, and the colors match the main cams well. There is electronic stabilization available for both cameras, and all the way up to 8K resolution on the main one. It does a great job of smoothing out the footage. So that's the ROG Phone 6 Pro. As ever, ASUS has delivered a top-notch gaming phone, which is pretty much unmatched when it comes to the sheer number of features and options available to enhance the gaming experience. Plus you get a standout display, excellent audio quality, and great battery life. With that said, it's not a huge upgrade over last year's model. It's splash proof now, you get a new chipset, and there are a handful of other tweaks. My biggest concern is that you can't get the full experience without the cooling fan. And while the previous models got one in the box, now you have to buy one separately, on top of an already pretty expensive device. Still, if you're after the latest and greatest in mobile gaming tech, the ROG Phone 6 Pro is the top dog, and it's worth a recommendation. Thanks for watching guys, stay safe and see you on the next one.